Hey boys and girls, guess what movie just came out? That's right, Argo! Oh, and uh, Wreck-It Ralph came out too. I saw the midnight release and absolutely loved it! Okay, maybe not the best kids movie in massive quotation marks ever, but I gotta say, probably... Yeah, it's my favorite kids movie ever. Just, oh, so good! I, I, I'm planning to do a, some sort of a video review of the movie game movie thing sometime in the near future, but I'd like to see it at least for a third or fourth, maybe fifth time before I state any concrete opinions of the picture. You know, just just so that, you know, I have some educated stance on it because it's so good! Just know that if you're watching this video and you haven't seen it yet, there's something severely wrong here. Go out, my child! Go out and watch Wreck-It Ralph after this video. After, get back here! The reason I brought this movie up is that Kubert has a rather um, <clears throat> significant minor role in the film. It'd be a spoiler to explain exactly how so, but let's just say it's one cameo they milked for all it's worth. Like Sonic's, but they used Kubert's a lot more because he caused less to show up on screen, if anything. I don't know. Does anyone even own Kubert anymore? <laughs> I don't know. He's sort of free reign. Anyway, with that said, I'm hoping in the glorious name of Arcaea Celestia that this means Kubert's gonna see a comeback in the next few years. Stay tuned for more of these pointless intros to find out just why that's so important that this game gets a sequel, or a remake, or a reimagining. I got a couple videos planned. Oh, and the, um, the, <clears throat> the LP is kinda nice, I guess, too. Yeah. With that said, let's begin. Ah, uh, what better way to open up the part than a loading screen? Alright, so now we're gonna start with level 4 of uh, Zila's domain, and this is the Snowflake level! It's also the least finished level of World 1. Clearly and distinctly because, wow, this is glitchy and just unfinished and looks bad. Anyway, you step on the snowflake pads, that's what I'm gonna call them, to make the uh, things appear, but as always, the teleporters won't appear if another one is forming. Uh, too much processing power? Question mark? I don't know. I say this is the least finished level because I don't finish this hub world like I did with the uh, third level, and yet for whatever reason the stage finishes anyway. I don't have to complete the hub, unlike every other level with a hub in the game. Except maybe, I don't know, I'll have to check into that. In the meantime, there is nothing new here except dancing snowflakes in the background. Marvel at those for a while. Now that's bad graphics right there, but Coily kind of disappeared into nothingness. I'll call it nothingness. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Ow. Yeah, pretty much. This is also the level, I believe. No, we already had speed, and they don't- I don't think they're using those platforms yet. This is basically the arbitrary, random, and, like, necessary level before we move on to the actual fun stuff. So forgive me if I sound a little bored during these levels. Nice lighting, though. I'm- guess they had their light source change positions occasionally? I don't know. Anyway. Maybe that's my monitor screwing up, I can't tell. I'm sure you guys can. So here's where Zila starts being quite a bit of a jerk with his uh, power-up placement. As you're gonna see there in a second, the speed power-up for this level is on a platform that gives you points and then falls. So if you're trying to go for a low score run like I tried, wow, like I tried all those years ago, then uh, you're definitely ow gonna run into some problems. And is that snowflake clipping through the? Okay, uh, I'll, I'll go with it. Anyway, as you saw there, you ha you're forced to get 100 points or you can't get the speed for that level. And I guess that's a smart thing for, as far as game design goes, but realistically, if this guy really, really, really wants to help you, well, if he really wanted to help you, he'd just hand you the power-ups. They don't have hands. Never mind. Hey look, two free extra lives. It's almost like they realized that some parts of this game were unfair. Shut up, texting. Anyway. 
So uh, apparently I'm supposed to call this guy Steve, is it? Frank? Okay. So, uh, Mortimer here, and his brother Morta not Mir. Yeah. Um, are both hopping along, as, as always. Uh, this is where the patterns get a little less predictable. Sometimes I swear they just programmed these guys just to act like red balls, but slower. Or at least some enemies in the game. And other times they just have really weird patterns that they follow. I, I don't follow it. But as you saw a little while back there, when you're using speed, you can actually hop on each of the falling platforms four times rather than three and you realize that they still only give out 300 points because they're mean like that. Yeah. Now, here's something I don't really understand. I mean, I do, but at the same time I don't. They're leaving for us all these extra things, like there's a, there's the three, and um, I, oh good, I'm not caught. <laughs> they're using the three blocks there to sort of give us secrets to, make us come crawling back to it in a future point time thing but honestly I just kind of forgot where they were and they don't really do anything as far as completing the game goes except up your score which by the time why was I just standing there I'll just say I was distracted so anyway, um, you know, the three's there, and it has what looks like a regular old frisbee. By the way, did you notice they haven't really handed us any, uh, Q-discs unless Coily's in the level? So they're finally getting to that mentality. And I can certainly appreciate that mentality. <coughs> but yeah, a, a lot of times I swear the animation was weird, like there was that one Q-disc that didn't spin at all, and yet for whatever reason... The other Q-Discs that do spin also act as teleporters, and I, I, I don't understand it. Anyway, that level was pathetic. I don't mean pathetic as in, like, pathetically easy or anything, but I guess pathetically bland would be a better word. It's always, besides the snowflakes dancing in the background, I don't remember anything from that level. Like, ever. Except, hey, remember that time I just stood there and didn't move? and got hit and stuff yeah um anyway level five now this is when things get creative they actually went out of the way to make this place really really unique starting with the awesome colors look at that it's like fuchsia and turns into that really deep blue purple whatever i don't know i like that and i actually I like all the colors they contrast very well in this level this is that weird Lime green, orange, whatever that is. Yeah. Although this is also where they start challenging you because they're handing out whack coilies again. And you know how much I love whack coilies. Now, what is that? We've had triangles, we've had bubbles, we've had swirlies, we've had snowflakes. What are the random hexagonal circle things doing? Fair point. Very fair point. Actually, I think that's probably what it is. Uh. Now, this stage to me was always like the perfect Z-Law stage. And I'm also really glad that they got to this level of difficulty because five and six really sort of satisfy me going back to this game. And that's nothing to say against any of the other stages. I think every world gets more creative in a, in a new or different way, I guess you could say. So, uh, you know, that's definitely something to be grateful for. Now, I have a whack coily stocked up because, yeah, I can do that. And there goes coily. I think that's supposed to be coily smoking down the side of it. I'm gonna say that that was Zila getting in my way again. I also love how coily he randomly warps. I mean, it's the power of 2D sprites. I mean, they do the same thing in Smash Brothers whenever you turn the camera and the explosion turns with you. I mean, it's it's the same concept, but seems kind of out of place here. I don't know. I guess, then again, yeah, I, I'm, I don't need you to explode on me again like that, Texty. Really, really, I'm good. This level. Okay, 
This was what sort of kept me, I don't know, apprehensive going back to this game because I thought this level was always the hardest thing in the world. Because, did you see that? The red balls just didn't stop and they randomly stopped, said my young self. In actuality, um, it's actually a very predictable system. Anytime that you're against one of those enemy spawning plates, I, they were never really given a name, I don't think. But uh, anytime you're near one of those enemy spawning plates, and it just seems like there's just a random tor uh, torrent of red balls coming down, really what's going on is that they're coming in groups of three. And then there's a big pause, I believe it's around the length or duration or whatever you want to call it, of I think maybe two red balls falling, maybe one and a half, I'm not that specific on the details of it. but. It's enough time to get in there and get out fast. Also, this seems to be just, again, to go back to level 4, this is the most finished looking and feeling level in all of Zelotum. I mean, 6 comes close. I guess they mean for it to be more refined because... I didn't realize you couldn't get Slicker Sam while time stops. That's kind of a cool way to know. I wonder if that happened with the old game. I'll, I'll have to check back with Classic Mode again. But anyway. And I'm pretty sure there's supposed to be background music? It's repetitive music, but it's music. I mean, <laughs> did they just forget about it? I think this might have something to do with the green ball. Um, especially the final ball. <clears throat> Spoilers of this game! Um, I sort of always feel like that the music cuts out there. It... D does it count as spoilers if I say there's music in the f final <clears throat> encounter? No? Okay, sure. Whatever. <sighs> Where's that last spot? Oh, it's up top. Okay, there, there we go. So yeah, that level was fun, in my mind. I guess... Actually, is that one in the lower left corner doing the infinity symbol? I, I think it was. That's kind of cool. I don't know. This level and the next, really, I, I love both 5 and 6 of Zila. And if if 3 and 4 played like this, but had unique gimmicks like 1 and 2, I might actually like these stages better, but if you notice, 5 used the same exact gimmick as 3. And I'm sure you're guessing that 6 uses the exact same gimmick as 5 and 3. As far as following Z-Law and finding the right power-up, did they just run out of ideas and they decide just fill it up with the rest of the stuff? I mean, I like the idea that it's not just a spidery platform now. And again, love the coloration on these levels. The backgrounds really do a nice job of contrasting with the why do I care about this stuff? <coughs> but in the meantime, um, what is that supposed to be on the bonus boxes? Most of them I can tell, like, oh, is this a... Oh, it's a whatever. But I have no idea what that's supposed to be. It always reminded me of the Humongous Entertainment logo, though I don't think that's what they intended for it to do. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they really like Pajama Sam. Who knows? Or Spy Fox. Spy Fox was awesome. Awesome. I do a let's play those games, but unfortunately, I don't think they continued making that Pajama Sam for the Wii. That would have been nice. So yeah, level six, uh, it circles, the lots and lots of circles. Is there supposed to be a point to those? I, I, I really can't tell. But, but anyway, this is probably my favorite area just because, first of all, that brown is really nice. And yes, Texty, that's the last I'll say about colors, I promise. I understand that. So, if you notice, the power-up is on a plank made out of, uh... I was trapped there. I'll assert that I was trapped there. Point taken. Anyway, the power-up is on a plank of, um... Falling bonus cubes, or, yeah, whatever they're called. So I love reeking in the points there, but really... You know, that, that's, that's just me, personally. I, I enjoy that. Now we finish the stage off, or I could be distracted. One thing to note is that they will never go to the top three platforms, so that's your safe net place thing. 
uh, d definitely something to keep in mind that if you don't move, you're fine, so that you're not constantly running. <coughs> Although we haven't really f seen anything yet that really would suggest that there is no hope if you, <laughs> if you like, stay in one place. But, um, <clears throat> that'll change, trust me. In the meantime, um, I don't think I actually explicitly said this yet, but whenever you see a little mini Hubert running around, that's actually your extra life counter. <sighs> now, anyway, the speed power-up is also a really nice addition to these stages, and I kind of just wish that, like, I, I don't know. I would have liked more, but I can't imagine what more would entail. Maybe a respawn of the Q discs? And here's another tri spawner of the red balls. Actually, it might be a full duration of three. I, I, like I said, I'm not good at counting. But anyway. So, we're running into a slight problem here. That's the last time Coily shows up in this stage, and yet I've got a whack Coily bat just randomly chilling in my inventory. So, uh, that basically means now, I love the synchronicity between those guys, by the way, but that basically means now I have to, one would think, anyway, that I would have to, like, I don't know, like, just sit with that power for the rest of the game, but actually what's really kind of neat is that they they thought of this, they thought ahead to this, and the Whack Coily Bat is the only power-up in the game that does this, where if there's another power-up that you would like instead, <sighs> if there is another power-up you would like instead, you just get it if you press the A button, I think it's like a, I always press it right before, but I don't actually know the timing. It might just be if you press the A button at all, it might just be that you get the power-up. I don't happen to recall at the moment. That is what you're here for. Thank you. So now all we have to do is finish up the hub and we're done with Z-Lock. Literally, we cleared everything. And now we can move on to the more interesting levels. Yeah. I hope I don't die. I'm on my last life after all. Kinda had me tense here. Synchronicity. Okay, there we go. Fortescue there had a grand old time hopping around, but that means we're done. We can move on. That means there's nothing else that we have to go back to, and we are totally done. With Zila, that is. In the meantime, wait, what's that? 